What's up, guys? Welcome to local band Smokeout. Smokeout. Any genre from, from anywhere in the entire world. I, I want to hear your music. And we're all set. Ladies and gentlemen, Lions! Give me a hell yeah. yeah! Yes! <laughs> Dude, Finally. do me a favor. For some people that do not know who you are, please introduce yourself. Let us know where you are in the world and plug and promote everything. So, um, my name is Lions, also on here known as Lions Den Productions, Lions Den Live, etc. Um, I guess you call me a rapper from uh, from out here in lovely, beautiful, scenic Apple Valley, California, where all the stars are born. <laughs> um been uh yeah doing this a couple years starting to get the swing of things and um yeah happy to happy to be here when you say a couple years how long have you been making music i don't know if you made music that wasn't rap music prior but uh how long have you been making music in general uh i would say since beginning of 2000 uh 2022 so about two years ago so i'm pretty pretty new to the new to this whole world what brought you into starting to to create music was there like a, a certain show or something happened that you were just like ah this is it it's time it's time to get get on it interestingly enough um i started the whole entertainment thing back in my like 20s i was trying to be a wrestler like a pro wrestler and i dedicated my life to it i was getting up i was going to training i was getting beat up i was breaking bones i was going through everything putting the miles and um it didn't work out you know um things happen in life so i had to kind of give that up and i'll be honest with you if you would have told me back then you're not going to be a wrestler lines you're going to be a rapper and people are actually going to like what you make I'd have told you you were freaking crazy. <laughs> so yeah, I've never made music before. I mean, when I was younger, I, you know, like ten or something, I'd listen to Power 106 and you know pretend to rap in my room or something. But other than that, like, n never my wildest dreams that I think I was going to start doing this. Um, I got my I don't know if you can see it. I got a Hatchet Man tattoo. I do on my arm. I got that when I was 18. Uh, I was a huge juggalo, still am, which is a fan of the band Insane Clown Posse and their whole label, their whole genre, which we'll get into. And um, I fell in love with the music. I fell in love with the whole vibe, the family, just everything that it kind of gave to me. And interestingly enough, when I really literally thought my life as an entertainer, my life as just anybody of importance was going to come to an end because I wasn't wrestling anymore. My Twitch streaming didn't take off. I tried to write a movie, didn't work out. Like I was trying all these different things, but just something said, you got to do something, dude. You can't just sit here. Um, it came around full circle because one day I'm like, what has ICP been up to? And I started looking them up. I'm like, huh, okay. Like things have changed in this world. There was new rappers like Ouija Mac which I've shared and guys like Darby O'Trill and Dot Strife and all these other, this new breed of like younger, mm -hmm. you know, juggalos. And I'm like listening to it. I'm like, this is good. You know, I, 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 I like it, but something triggered in me, BG, where I'm like, I can do this better. I don't know what it was. I don't know if I was right. <laughs> I don't know if it is better. Just something in my heart just said, dude, you can, you can do that. Like you can actually make something that you're going to enjoy much better than that. No offense to any of them. It was just something that clicked in my brain. And that's what made me start making, you know, my style of music. Just went just instantly poop, popped right there. But then how yeah. does, how do you have such a love for, for, for J rock and, and baby metal and, and stuff like that? Like, where does that come from with, with the ICP love? Uh, cause I'm a weirdo. 
<laughs> I Fair like, enough. I like, I, like, I, like it. I like weird stuff, you know. Um, I like things that aren't normal, like music-wise. So, for example, the metal band Guar. I've seen them a few times. I love Guar because you see something mm -hmm. that you don't see all the time at these metal shows. I love you, BG. I love you guys. But I can't bleeping stand most heavy metal. I just can't. It's it, it wasn't what I grew up with. It's not it's something that I sort of developed a slight taste for listening to it over and over. I was always a rap guy. So nothing wrong with that. Yeah. So I would I would find anything. Like I said, I also come up from a pro wrestling background. So I'm a very visual person. And when I saw the J but when I saw stuff like J pop and J rock and all that, I'm like, oh, this is interesting. But then one day I found baby metal. And I'm like. Not only was it catchy, but it was very visual. And it made the beast inside of me just go, ah, this is nice, right? <sighs> so, you know, we all need that sometimes. And um, I had tickets to go see Baby Metal. I it was, was going to go to Vegas. I had bought the tickets already. Um, I was like, this is it. This is going to be my, my trip. And then out of nowhere, Mr. Mike Storm was putting on a show locally here in Apple Valley the same day. And when I started doing music, I'm like, I'm going to do something at this spot. Like just something told me like, you're going to do something here. You're going to perform out here. And it just so happened he was doing it the day of the baby metal show. And we had talked and he said, Hey man, come out and, and do some music for us. So I sold my baby metal tickets on Ticketmaster canceled my plans and i stayed out here and did the show and that changed everything um, it it really did that's awesome it like and 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 I, I i that's why i have this big love for baby metal right now because i'm like without them who knows i might not have even started doing things the way i was doing them out here because once i did that show it started to really snowball and um Believe it or not, I was trying to learn Japanese so I can understand baby metal. And that's when my EP, Lions Takes Japan, the, I, the idea of that came out. And I made that song Katana and all these other songs because I was using some of the Japanese I used to, to make them. And the next thing you know, I can't go to these places over here without people coming up to me going, slices bitches up with my katana. And, <laughs> you know, it makes me makes me feel good. You know, I get it. That's, but, a, that's uh, a cool but, feeling. But, but, yeah, it wouldn't have it wouldn't have happened without that. So you have a you have a really cool show that's coming up. One that I have calendared. I'll absolutely be attending on uh, July twenty seventh. You're throwing a Juggalo night at Froggy's, and you have a rather large guest as as the main headliner performer. How did you go about getting him involved? And uh, can you just elaborate on that that really awesome show? Sure. So July 27th, Juggalo Night, High Desert, Apple Valley, California, 7 p.m. This was an idea that came to me. I wanted to do my own show. Um, I'll be honest with you. The music scene out here, if, it's, if this is the way the music scene is in general with how things can be sort of clicky and sort of... Um, I guess you can say politicky. Mm -hmm. You just sometimes you decide, you know what, if you want to get something done, you got to do it yourself. And at the time I got kind of annoyed almost feeling like I'm begging people to put me on. Like, hey, you got a spot? Hey, you got a, you got, got a couple minutes there and then them either blowing me off or just, you know, being not very not very nice. So I just went to the owner of the bar. I said, look, I have this idea. I want to put on a show. What do I need to do? And she, uh, the owner of Froggies, told me what I needed to do. I said, oh, um, kind of new. Not sure how big of a draw. You, you was, never like promoted shows or anything like that before before this? No. Okay. Just again, just like starting the music just hit me. Just something told me you got to do it and you have like you have to do it like there was no you should it's you have to so um i decided to do juggalo night and i had a bunch of people 
that from my scene, such as uh, Shout Out Six Side, uh, Freak Show, um, and of course the main event, Mr. Chucky Chuck himself from the Cottonmouth Kings. <laughs> I was uh, I was floating around a few people um, that I wanted to bring in that would not only represent like the local music scene out here, like Mike Storm, JB, of course, um, Curtis Mack, and and G Hippie, and all the others. But I'm like, I want to bring people that haven't been here before that I know would put on an amazing show and that represent what I represent musically, which is sort of that darker, maybe sometimes more comedic, just, you know, not your regular old rap, you know, not your old regular old hip hop. Um, and I thought, well, I don't know how big of a draw I'm going to be, but I want to pack that place. I need to get me a headliner. And I was thinking of Mr. Will Gates. Shout out Will Gates. Uh, he's one of the other Juggalo homies out in uh, Michigan, but the there are too many moving parts, and just something clicked. I go, well, Chucky's local, maybe he'd be down. Hit him up, found out what I needed. Surprisingly, it worked out, and he said, yeah, let's do it. So, made him the special uh, special guest of honor at the show. That's which, awesome. Yeah, which um, is the reason why I started promoting it so early. Because he said, yeah, let's do it. I'll start promoting it right now. Who am I going to tell? Who am I to tell Chucky e. Chuck? No, 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 not yet. Just said, let's just do it now. So it's been in the calendar for about five months. Never doing that again, <laughs> <laughs> which is promoting something so far ahead. But it was special circumstances. I'm sure it's being um, packed. Did you did uh, you yeah. uh, did you bring uh, hot sauce for the trivia portion? Did I bring hot sauce? Only the Excellent. best. Excellent. Good old fashioned Cholula. I got a uh, ghost pepper and blueberry. I'm gonna roll with. What are we? What are we doing? I know you've seen a bunch of these. What are we? What are we doing? What's the topic? Shit. Um. You know what? Hit me with some wrestling trivia. See if you can find something about uh, on wrestling trivia. I'm going to just in case I have to load up this. So this, shot this can be like any. Any WWF like WWE. or WWE, it's particularly WWE, or can I go WWF also? Yeah, sure, both of them. Why not? Okay. I need a second on that because I wasn't. I thought you were going to pick a movie or TV show, so give me just a second. But who's your favorite? <laughs> who's your favorite wrestler? And did you did you get to meet any any big time wrestlers during your time when you were wrestling? Um, during my time, a little bit. Um, a couple people actually that started off in my world ended up being on wwe tv either they were doing jobs meaning they were the local talent that was losing all the time um or they actually got put on a guy named jesus rodriguez he was the um manager for a guy named alberto del rio and uh he just showed up at the right place right time one day and you know, he had a tuxedo on and they hired him and he was a good friend of mine and he was there for a couple of years. But, um, but yeah, no, I've, I've met like guys like Al Snow and uh, I've got a bunch of autographs. So yeah, it was, it was a good time, but no one, no one that I was able to work with, unfortunately. For sure. Well, let's see if you really do know your wrestling trivia. <laughs> this is a hard one to start but I feel like you still might know it. In 1998, Survivor Series, The Rock wins his first championship. Who did he beat to win the championship? Uh, 98, I was watching Survivor Series. Survivor Series 98. Uh, he used the sharpshooter. Bret Hart? It is not Bret Hart, but I'll give you. Uh, he he beat Bret Hart to re to win the Intercontinental title, and that's not what we're looking for. We're looking for the W. So this, this was that was like right before this. So I'll give you one more shot. <laughs> Vince McMahon calls for the bell in this match. Mm. Mankind. That is correct. Give me a hell yeah. <laughs> Damn it! But I already poured the I already poured the hot sauce in a shot, so I'll still take it. With well done. 
Well done. Now, Lions, if the 27th is a big success, do you anticipate putting on more shows in the future? I'm not so far. Um, yeah. yeah. As as anybody, I'm sure you put on shows before. A couple. There's a, there's a lot of stress that can come with putting on shows. A lot of unexpected things that can happen, which has already kind of hit me about 50 times. So I'm at that mental point where I'm just like, Let's get this thing done and over with. <laughs> um, yeah, absolutely. I'm hoping to. I'm hoping to do another another thing. I'm hoping in October if I get an, if I get an opportunity, maybe even a couple bands to play. Um, I just got to figure out the logistics of it. But yeah, I'd love to. Um, just hoping this goes this goes according to plan, um, and everybody has a good time, and just word of mouth gets around like, hey. You see Lions putting on a show, or if you see Lions on a flyer, you know he's putting in the work for it, and that you're gonna, you're gonna have a good time, you know. That's what we want. We want we want someone that's hungry and hustling, hungry and hustling. Well, I'm pissed off that I stu- I wasn't able to stump you on the first question, so this one I would say is significantly harder. Okay. In 1989, at the Royal Rumble. Chat, do not help him out. Who did Big John Stud defeat to win the Royal Rubble? Rumble? In 1989. To win the Royal Rumble? Um, Andre the Giant? That is not correct. Enjoy the hot sauce. The answer is Ted DiBiase. Ah, he was my... Uh, it was the first person I was thinking about. All right. Dang, you definitely know a lot of wrestling uh, uh, trivia, though. I'm impressed. Yeah, when, I, when I was a kid, I used to be able to just sit there and name name wrestlers all the time and name you know do my own trivia. But then, you know, it happens. The ganja. And then, you want to get yeah, <laughs> Then you don't, remember, you don't remember where you put your shoes. Yeah, you be forgetting. You, you be forgetting stuff. Cheers. While you're suffering from hot sauce... Talk me through, today is the day, it's time to work on a new song. How do you start from scratch? What's your process? What DOS system do you use? All that good stuff. Uh, so, uh, I'll usually grab a beat from either one of my guys, like uh, Jetro, shout out Jetro. Um, or I'll, I'll hop on uh, Beat Stars. If you know that website, you could just yeah. buy beat leases or whatever and i'll just stand in my backyard for a couple hours believe it or not just pacing back and forth listening to stuff and i'll be usually smoking nowadays i have a, a beer with me too but i'll just be back there just listening to beats listening to beats and just mumbling to myself and then i'll think of a funny a funny hook you know just like revenge of the cock for example or just something <laughs> Something something weird, and then I'll go. Okay, I got the hook. Let me build a story around around the <laughs> hook. So then I'll start kind of again mumbling to myself until I finally get some ideas. I'm like, all right, I got to go write this down. So then I'll go inside. I'll just start writing everything down. And um, this is my mic. When I first started, I was re- recording off of my phone. I would sit in my car with a cheap mic shield holding it like this i'd have my phone i'd be holding it like this and i'd have my notes either on the phone or on written on my lap or somewhere and i'd be like this like i'd i'd be sweating profusely in my car i was just trying to get like the best sound that i could um revenge of the cock that it was all recorded on my phone in a car and wow. then i mix and mastered it on band labs band labs absolutely free to use well, I think. No, they got a membership thing now. But I use band labs for everything just because I don't know FL. I don't know any of that other stuff. I'm just like, make music sound good. Put here, click button, <laughs> go. Like, and it, and it works. You know, and I've learned a lot about compression and um, denoise. You know, all the basic stuff that all you guys that do music, like, really know 
really, really well. I, I, I just go, let me listen to it until it sounds good. And then I'll, I'll go, okay, this sounds good. And then I'll tweak it 50 more times because I don't know better. And then I'll finally just like put it out and mix and master it. So yeah, it, it's pretty much just pacing back and forth in my backyard until I come up with something. Cool. And you're, you're committed to get the good sound, even though you don't have all the fancy gear and, and plugins and, and, and DAW systems and stuff. You still found a way to get the product out, which is awesome. Uh, this is The next one is a two-part question. How would you prefer someone to go about contacting you to collab with you? And who is an artist, let's say you have an infinite budget, that you want to work with that just hasn't happened yet? So... I really would like to know if somebody wants to, this is where the seriousness of my, of what I do comes in because yes, I like to have fun. Yes. My music isn't like everyone else. Some people may not take it seriously. That's great. I don't even really take the music itself seriously, but I take the creative process and the performance process and the marketing of it seriously. So I've had folks hit me up to do features. I have no idea who they are. Um, I don't, see them taking their own music seriously so i don't know if i'm going to give this guy a you know a day of my time of my 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 rap or my lyrics or my music what are they going to do with it right so the third and like they i got to know that they're going to do something with it but most importantly i like to know that this person likes what i do and they understand my vision they understand okay that's that's just lions. It's like South Park, right? People will complain South Park goes too far. Well, they'll go like, oh, did you hear that guy's music? He sang about his cock breaking off and breaking and killing people. Really? Who? How dare he? Who was it? Some guy named Lions. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's just Lions. Like, it's sort of the, in the same vein, right? But I like to know people actually like my music where they'll go hey i let i heard this i i listened to this song this thing's so funny we should do something together and when i know that they really truly um like what i do and they value my vision and they want to be a part of it and i know that they'll do something with it that really means a lot to me like i've actually turned down a few people that wanted to do something with me that were actually kind of in the scene but they they never I didn't see them following me on Instagram. I didn't see them, you know, commenting on any of my posts or listening to my music or mentioning to me, hey, I heard this song. This song sounds good. No, it's just like, oh, like, let me get three, four hundred bucks out of you and I'll, and I'll throw you a feature. I go, well, kiss off, you know, like that. And that's the other thing, too. Um, this, you know, same thing goes with booking, right? I came from wrestling. There were times if you were in wrestling, sure, maybe you won't get paid. It happens. You get a hot dog and a handshake if you're lucky, right? But you knew where you stood. You knew, okay, not getting paid, but I'm still going to be able to perform and whatever. Where the hell did pay for play come from in music? This pay for play nonsense for doing shows, I understand. Like, I've done a couple, but. I understood the situation. Maybe like my buddy Six Side, he did a show in Vegas. He goes, hey, Lions, I rented out back to the 80s in Vegas. It's a free show. We're just asking for the performers to kick down a little bit towards the venue. Cool. Totally understand. Or um, shout out Elijah when I did Kush Stock. Hey, Lions, you know, I want to have you on the show. I, I built this big thing, this big stage. We're going to be in this, this area of the show. You know, I just need X amount of money, not even a lot. It was like, you know, less than a hundred bucks to from everyone just to get on the spot. Just help me help me out a little bit. Cool. No problem. But where this whole. Oh, yeah. So you give me a hundred bucks now. How many tickets can you sell? Well, let me give you 50 tickets. You can sell those at 10 bucks a piece or 20 bucks a piece. And then you make a profit like, bro. <laughs> What in what world does that make sense? Like maybe to other performers, it makes sense. It don't make sense to me. And, you know, not to go off on a tangent from your question, but this was something that's I really wanted to hit. I think that whole structure needs to change. I feel if you're not if you can't afford to either pay your headliner, pay your venue, 
be willing to take a loss on a show, you have no business promoting a show. That's just my thing. I don't think it's fair to have performers kicking up the money just because you want to get paid. Mm. What about us, dude? You know, um, rant over. But yeah, F pay for play. I hate that shit. I do too, but uh, it was a good rant. Well done. <laughs> <laughs> um, we have time for, for uh, a little bit more, but I want to know what, now that Lyontology's out, when do you start working on, on new material and uh, when could we expect more more music in the future? Oh, so first off, Lyontology, yes, out now. Thank you, everybody. That's made it my biggest release that I've ever done. Um, I've actually had two other full-length albums before this, plus everything else has been EPs or singles. So I love the fact Lyontology is doing so well because it's gotten everyone I've met to start listening to my old stuff and go, this is good. When did this come out? Is this new? Um, it's about it's already over a thousand streams. For me, that's a big deal. So that's like my biggest release ever so far. But uh, I like to work in seasons. So right now it's the season of Lyontology. We're all enjoying the, the energy and the aura that Lyontology is bringing to us this summer. By fall, usually I'll transition into maybe a different season, a different story, a different feeling. Maybe I'll release a single in between there. But right now, I just actually started listening to some beats. Um, I laid down some lyrics on a, on a song that was uh, inspired a little bit by what JB does. A little bit more of a... Uh, a little bit more of a, a, a feely song, if that makes sense. Mm. So, yeah, um, I, I like to work on things as soon as I start to feel like, okay, we're getting over, we're getting over this hump of this last one. We're gonna go down, take a little bit of a dip, create some stuff, and then come right back. So, um, I'm always, I'm always trying to come up with something, but, uh, but you could always expect at least every season I'm gonna try to come out with something new. Cool. So no, we don't have to wait too long. Um, and SoCal no. Juggalos wants to know what's the inspiration behind Amigos from Lyontology? Well, first off, shout out SoCal Juggalos. SoCal Juggalos is the main reason I'm even here right now. I, am, I'm, I mean that. Now, this man that runs SoCal Juggalos named Party Monster listened to my very first two or three songs before I even knew what mixing and mastering was. I, it sounded like garbage. And he told me something. He said, there's nothing worse than a great song that's ruined because it's not mixed or mastered. You know, like he goes, he goes, you have great songs. I love the stories, but you gotta, you gotta mix and master that stuff. And BG, you know, I'm, I'm a, I'm a fan of the, of the just straight truth. Here's what you need to do or else you're effing up. Right. Mm -hmm. So he puts me on to six side who coincidentally enough, I used to party with when I was 18, when we used to dress up like juggalos and paint our faces and go to universal studios and hang out 20 years later, I meet up with him again and he's doing music and he helped me do my mixing and my mixing and mastering. So, um, I just wanted to say first off, shout out so-called SoCal Juggalos. You know, if you're interested in the Juggalo world at all, the music in the music that follows th this whole Juggalo scene, hit him up, follow him on everywhere. He's a great guy. Amigos, it was just one of those things. I was walking back and forth in my backyard. He knows this. He's seen me do it. You know, we'll talk on the phone. And I was just listening to the beat. And um it came it came with the hook just amigos uh, yeah they're my amigos and then it, it just stuck with me and then every day i'd start singing it and i'd sing the hook i go okay well this is called amigos now apparently mm -hmm. you know um and then i just got inside and just started writing uh i actually don't have that many friends so you know it's it really is genuinely about the very few that you can trust and that one that's always going to be the snake that you're going to have to take care of at a certain point so katana is head yeah. off <laughs> exactly <laughs> exactly hell yeah well lions this is fun man uh I, i've met you a couple times in person you're a great guy i thoroughly enjoy your music and uh, i look forward to to hanging out soon especially probably uh july 27th not missing that show 
at Froggy's Juggalo Night. Appreciate it. Um, that's going to be a good time. If you guys haven't already uh, spun and jammed Liontology, you're missing out. Please support them. But uh, Lion, is there anything that we missed today that you wanna you wanna send us out on? Um, just first off, just thank you, just thank you, everybody. You know that's that's been giving me um, just so much love. Everybody from you know JB, Lizzie, you of course, BG, Heart Divided, um, just everybody, people that wouldn't normally rock my stuff because I perform in front of a lot of the casuals and I don't, you know. And I like to I like to get them to go. What the? You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. But um, I want to thank everybody that really genuinely values what I'm doing. That's that rocks with it. Um, oh, oh yeah. That one question you asked me: Who would I want to work with? Definitely want to do a song with Hex. I, I definitely would want to do a song with Hex. Obviously, Ouija Mac down the line. But yeah, like Hex. He's one of my favorites. I'd love to do something with him. And, of course, Chucky Chuck. But, yeah, um, everybody just, you know, shoot me a follow. Facebook, Instagram, Lines Den Productions. Uh, just check YouTube. out what I got going on. Yeah, you, my YouTube. You're working hard um, on that one. I, I'm trying. I'm trying. And um, and I might end up coming back to Twitch at some point. I used to stream. I might get back to it just, you know, and have something to do other than that that's 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 lions in a nutshell man and i appreciate you uh, appreciate you having me here it is always a pleasure uh hanging with you sir but uh we got to learn a little bit more about you today and i'm glad you were here to to uh give us that knowledge and information and uh yeah and we look forward to the to the the show the new music coming seasonally but uh this is awesome lions i appreciate you brother thank you so much hell yeah ladies and gentlemen the one the only lions yeah, hell yeah <laughs> Cheers, sir. I'll uh, I'll send this to you later tonight. All right, sounds good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>